Hello again. I'm back with 10 more vocabulary words from chapter 10 of the Vocabulary Power 2 book we use in my high intermediate level 5 ESOL class. Now, <clears throat> we're going to start with some dictation per usual. I'm going to pronounce the word so you can hear the pronunciation. I'm also going to spell the word so you can practice spelling at home if you'd like. Our first word for today is the word affect. Affect. A, F, F, E, C, T. Affect. Affect. There's a similar word, effect. Effect with an E. All right, similar word that you might hear, but a little different meaning. Affect, affect is a verb that means to produce a change in something or in someone, to influence someone or something, all right, and cause some sort of change. For example, if someone says something mean to me, okay, if someone says something mean, I don't like the way you look, it could affect my my how I feel about my day or the way I'm thinking about myself like oh is there something on my face um is it my hair is it my clothes what, what's going on and it, it can affect the way that we think when we hear words like that sometimes all right it shouldn't <laughs> but we know that sometimes it can especially for small children right someone says oh I don't like you and it can affect them and make them think Oh, what's, what, why? Why don't they like me? What's happening? Right? Okay. Important to teach your children uh, <laughs> to be able to react kindly to those types of things and to have their own personal self-confidence, right? Um, so they're not affected by every comment someone makes or says. All right. Um, affect could also be something for something not, you know, that doesn't have any negative meaning. It's it could be positive. I could say, wow, your kind words, your nice words affected me. And they made me want to do something nice for you. They, they created a change in me. Maybe I'm having a bad day. And you say, hey, wow, I really like, uh, I really like your hair today. Or, you look really nice today. Okay, and maybe I say, wow, that makes me feel better. It affected my day in somehow, in some way. Okay, affect to produce some sort of change in someone or influence them, in someone or something. Uh, the next word, crush, crush. Okay, C R U S H, C R U S H, crush. Okay, now crush. We use in more than one way, like a lot of words in English. I'll show you the first idea. Okay. It's really like to apply pressure to something and smash it. Smash it down. So let me give you an example. Here's a can. All right. Maybe there's a drink inside or something like that. But you have a can, an aluminum can. And then imagine... Here comes a boot, all right? Here's a boot, a foot, and it's going down onto the can. Okay, what happens to the can? Let's see. Mm -hmm. The boot crushes the can. The can is crushed. The boot crushes the can. Okay? You're stepping on it. All right? See? <laughs> to crush. To crush something. Now, that's one meaning of the word. To crush. To, to put, apply pressure to something and smash it. Crush. Okay? Its shape is being smashed together. To crush. All right. Um, there's 
there's a, f a famous scene in the Star Wars movies, in the original Star Wars movie, A New Hope, and Luke Skywalker and Han Solo and some of uh, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, they're in a garbage, a garbage chute, and the walls begin to press together where there's all this garbage, and it almost crushes them. Okay, they're inside, they're like, no, no, no. It's moving closer together, and they're afraid they're going to be crushed. All right, uh, another, another word here. Oh, sorry, also with crush, another way that we use this that's very different, okay? <laughs> A very different use of this word. Let's see here. <laughs> Real, just a quick picture here. A crush, a uh, uh, crush that we looked at before to, to smash something, to apply pressure to smash something, uh, is a verb. But crush as a noun, if you have a crush or you are crushing on someone, these are more like cultural uses of the word, um, that means like you like someone. So if you have a crush, you like that person and they don't really know that. Okay, it's, it's like your secret. You're thinking, ooh, I like her, or I like him, and it's your secret. They don't know that, and you're just feeling this special way about the person, hoping that they will like you. You're thinking about maybe being their boyfriend, being their girlfriend, okay, to crush. So in this picture, this boy is thinking about this girl. She is his crush. The girl is his crush. She might not know that, but he's thinking about her and that, wow, she's so lovely. She's so amazing. She's so beautiful and so nice, so cute, so, so intelligent, so strong, so, you know, so in incredible. He's thinking all of these good things about her. He likes her. He wants to be her boyfriend. Maybe she doesn't know that yet. After he tells her, if she says yes, they become a couple, boyfriend and girlfriend. But before that, when he's just thinking about it, like, wow. She's his crush. And we can also use it as a verb culturally. This is, like, again, more cultural use of the language. You could say he is crushing on her. But that's, again, more of like a cultural thing. He's crushing on her. He's really, oh, yeah, he's crushing on her. But not, not, um, not the normal use of that word, Okay. But yeah, if you hear, if you hear your, your children using that word in that way now, maybe you have an idea of what they're talking about. Okay, declare. D-E-C-L-A-R-E. D-E-C-L-A-R-E. -E. Declare. Declare. Okay. Declare is to make something known to other people, to say something or write something to make an announcement, all right? You've probably seen that word before, announce or announcement. You're creating an announcement that other people can see. It's public. For example, the Declaration of the United States, the Declaration of Independence of the United States. In the Declaration of Independence, <clears throat> Thomas Jefferson is writing on behalf of some of the other founding fathers to say to the king of England, hey, it's public information now. We are independent. We think of ourselves as independent. We are claiming and deciding to be independent. Okay, so they're writing this public, public declaration, this public information now that the king can see. It's, no, it's not a secret anymore, the declaration, all right? Or imagine in the previous example, the boy, he has a crush. Well, when he decides to tell the girl that he likes her, he could say, I want to declare my love for you. I want to declare my love for you. All right. Declare. He's making that information public. It's not a secret anymore. The next word, export. Export. E-X-P-O-R-T. You might have seen this word. 
we have exports and imports. X, the idea of going out. Export. All right. This is the word we use for products that one country sells to a different country. So, for example, let's say mm, Venezuela. All right. In the past, a big export of Venezuela was petroleum, oil, gasoline, right? Um, a big, they had a big production. Or let's say in the United States, we export a lot of movies, media, songs. We export a lot of entertainment. We create the entertainment in the United States and it goes to another country. In Venezuela, they can create oil from the petroleum or they can control, create gasoline from their petroleum and oil and sell that to a different country, right? So it's not staying in the country. And the opposite of that, import, this is not one of our vocabulary words this week, but just so you know, import, Im uh, import, sorry, <laughs> exports and imports. An import, it's coming into the country. Import, all right. Next word. Instant, instant, I-N-S-T-A-N-T, -N -T. instant, like instant coffee, okay, <laughs> you, maybe you would like it if they had instant English, where it's something that's, that's quick and easy, and now you have it, now you know it, instant coffee, it's, it's ready, like that, you pour the water, boom, it's ready to go. If you had instant English, you know, maybe they, you would look at a video and all of a sudden you know everything that you need to know about English, right? <laughs> but instant, yeah, it's something that happens very, very, very quickly. Like when you put food in the microwave, maybe one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, and it's ready. Uh, <laughs> but for some people, that's not quick enough, I guess. Anyways, instant it's happening very, very, very quickly. Almost immediate. Precious. Precious. P-R-E-C-I-O-U-S. Beautiful word. Love this word. Precious. Precious is something valuable to you. Okay? And not really based on money. It could have a sentimental value, right? It could be value to you, valuable to you because of the emotion you have connected with it. For example, imagine that your great-grandfather gives you a watch, an old watch. Well, maybe that watch is not really worth a lot of money now. People don't use watches like that very often now. But you say, wow, that belonged to my grandfather. He had it during World War II. World War II. He was a hero. That could have a special emotional value to you. It's precious and you cannot replace it. If you lose that watch, you're not going to find another watch that belonged to your grandfather that's exactly the same that he had at the same time, right? It's precious. The value is not really measurable. Your children should be precious to you, okay? Children are precious. It's a new life, valuable, because their, you know, their, their innocence, their, their new life in this world, they're precious. You cannot replace one person with another person, okay? Everyone is precious. Next, next, uh, next word, publish. Publish. P U B. L I S H P U B L I S H Publish. You've probably seen this on the internet when you create something and you, you make it public. Okay, we use this word for books, we use it for videos, we use it for lots of things that you are creating and making available to the public. 
So with these videos, when this video is ready, I upload, I upload the videos. I will upload this one as well. When it's prepared and everything's good to go, click the publish button and now it's available for everyone to see if they want to. All right, so publish. To make something that you create available to other people, to the public. Scatter. Scatter. S-C-A-T-T-E-R. S-C-A-T-T-E-R. Scatter. Scatter. Scatter is to is for things to go in different directions, all right? An example of that, you think about birds. You see a lot of birds collected in one place, all right? All the birds are in one place. And if you run at the birds really quickly, they scatter. They go in different directions. They don't all move in the same direction, right? If you're chasing the birds, they don't follow each other and go straight. They move in lots of different directions. They scatter, okay? Scatter. If you feel scatterbrained, if you're feeling scatterbrained, that means that your thoughts are not really connected. It's that you're, you're thinking many different thoughts in many different directions. Scatterbrained, all right? Your thoughts are like this. They're just all over the place, okay? It's like not one consistent thought, not one straight line, scatterbrained. But to scatter just means things are going in different directions. Imagine I have some seeds, all right? I have a collection of seeds, and I want to plant them. I could plant them in a nice row, all right, very methodically, conscientiously. Or I could take the seeds and I could just toss them in, over the ground. I could scatter the seeds, and they're landing in different places. There's a, a parable in the Bible about that, about seeds that some are landing on, the, on good soil, some are landing in thorns, some land on the rocks, okay? They're just landing in different places to scatter. All right. And the next, next word, severe, S-E-V-E-R-E. Severe, S-E-V-E-R-E, -E -E. severe, severe. Severe means something very serious, all right? Very serious, severe. If someone speaks to you in a severe tone, it sounds very serious, maybe a little angry, okay? Ah, oh, don't do that. It's severe, it's serious, okay? If you have a severe injury, imagine you cut yourself, right? Ah, and you got the blood, ah, okay? And you imagine it hurts really bad. <laughs> that could be a severe injury, all right? You're like, no, I'm bleeding, ah, my bones are coming out and my muscles, ah, whatever. Um, a severe injury, very serious injury. If you have a severe illness, okay? It's a very serious illness. Someone's very sick, very dangerous for their health, okay? They have to be very careful to recover from that illness or that sickness, a severe illness. If you cannot see very well, right? You're looking and everything's blurry, you can't see. You could be severely blind or you're eyesight could be severely limited, okay, extremely limited or extremely blind. It's hard for you to see. Everything's blurry. Lots of different ways we can use this to mean something's very serious or extreme in some way, okay? Uh, and the last word, wound. Wound. W-O-U-N-D. W-O-U-N-D. In D. Wound. Wound. Wound is a type of severe injury or some type of injury, a cut on the skin, for example. Or a bullet. If, you, if a bullet goes through your skin, you probably will have a wound afterwards. It's somewhere that your skin has been cut and pierced. All right? 
But the word wound could also be used in English to talk about an emotional injury. So maybe uh, you have some emotional pain, some severe emotional pain, a severe emotional injury. It's not a quick fix. It's not a simple problem. It's a severe problem. We can also use this word, okay? Something that takes time to heal. Just like with a physical injury. If you have a bullet go into your skin, the bullet breaks the skin, it takes time to heal that or a deep physical wound. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Keep practicing.